green room, live in the D green room. Uh, that is something that I will buy for the fridge, for the okay. car bar fridge, beer and pop and mixers, that sort of thing. Look but otherwise, great. I'm pantry and freezer all the way. What about you? I am definitely fridge and pantry. And then freezer is like kind of an afterthought for some reason. Maybe because I don't have to buy that much stuff. But for my pantry, I definitely don't play with my seasonings. I have to have plenty of seasoning because if you ain't seasoned, if you're not sneezing, it's not seasoned. Okay, let's take a look at the rest of our discussion on this thrilling topic. Pantry, fridge, or freezer? Are you more of a grocery shopper that fills the fridge, the pantry, or the freezer? Okay, so we didn't have the freezer in there originally, but you are a total freezer person. I'm a pantry freezer person. Pantry freezer person. I'm a definitely a refrigerator person. So the refrigerator would be like deli meats and cheeses. That would be like vegetables. Vegetables, eggs. Eggs, eggs dairy, anything that's going to go bacon. bad short term. Yeah, I think I'm always thinking more in terms of, so my, my, dang, this is hard. Definitely would be the fridge first, pantry second, because the pantry would include your spices and seasonings, right? Mm -hmm. So you gotta make sure those are fully stocked. I always try to buy two or three at one time so you don't run out of like the onion powder or garlic mm -hmm. or whatever. Then it would be the freezer. See, freezer and pantry, okay, my freezer game is Trader Joe's Strong because they have all that bagged pre-made meals. I don't know if the Jody's going to shake like. her head because it's high in sodium. <laughs> but I fill the freezer with Trader Joe's bags. Okay. And then the pantry, that's where I put my chunky soup, my Kraft mm -hmm. mac and cheese. You still drink, eat chunky soup? Like oh, the old yeah. school out of the can? Yeah, okay. Progresso soup, chunky soup, uh, pasta. Pasta, uh, key. Buca uh, bucatini, um, shells. Quinoa. <laughs> okay, all good, all good. Salad dressing. All of that stuff. But doesn't salad dressing go in the fridge? After it's open, yes. Oh, okay. This guy's thinking. All right, so next up, we checked in with a place that has an activity that Jason will absolutely love. Look, I'm juggling, yeah. Mom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these golf balls came courtesy of our friends up at uh, Treetops in Gaylord, and of course, Gaylord itself. And in this segment, we're going to hear all about the outdoors stuff that you can get into up there. Yeah, and if you don't know how to golf very well, like me, you can ride a bike, go kayaking, a bunch of other cool stuff. More than one million people in Michigan are going to travel over the upcoming Memorial Day weekend and even more plan to get away throughout the summer. And you don't have to drive very far to get away from it all and enjoy a fun family vacation or even just you and a buddy for the weekend, you know, going golfing or whatever. And it's all right here in Michigan. We want to welcome Paul Beach now with the Gaylord Tourism Bureau and Barry Owens, the general manager of Treetops Resorts in Gaylord. Good morning to you both. Hey, good morning, Jason. Good, good to morning. see you. Great to be in studio. So we have golf clubs here, we have bike, we have a bike, we have a fishing rod, uh, we have all kinds of stuff here. Let's start with Paul. Tell us a little about Gaylord and what's up there. Well, you know, I saw your show this morning about uh, getting outdoors, and Gaylord's brand is all outdoors. So if you're looking to get outdoors for biking, for small lake activities, Gaylord has every sort of bike trail. Uh, we have over 90 small lakes, five major trout streams to uh, take a pole up and do some fishing, but uh, just a great, uh, great location to get outdoors. And people have found the restorative, the healthful nature, and just the fun of getting outside over the past couple of years. So uh, we just have such a wide variety of fun trails for the family. If you're looking for something a little hardcore, just a great destination for all of that, Jason. Do you have to have a fancy bike like this Cannondale here or no? Uh, you do not have to have a fancy, that doesn't have very many miles on it this spring. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now, what, what about, uh, you know, we know about the rivers and streams. Uh, any sort of, you know, rapids or, or tubing or rafting or anything like that? So we are the headwaters for five major river systems. Uh, most notable is the Sturgeon River. It's the fastest flowing river in the lower peninsula of Michigan. Uh, there's uh, kayak, um, uh, suppliers, you can rent a raft, you can rent paddle boards. Uh, again, just a, a great way to get outdoors and enjoy uh, the nature and being outside. And what about, uh, Barry, tell us about uh, treetops, because, you know, that's, you're speaking my language now. <laughs> I like it. I like it. No, it's, uh, we're all geared up and uh, seasons, uh, uh, golf seasons in full bloom, as they say up there. And uh, it's, it's great. Uh, our tradition golf course celebrates 25 years this year, and we did a bunch of uh, renovations on it. 
you'll like this. We removed a bunch of trees. Oh, oh <laughs> my nemesis on the course. But of course, that's how I end up finding like dozens of lost balls because yeah. I go traipsing into the woods and come out with a whole shirt full of them. Now, we are going to put fescue in, in its place, so it might just be the same. Oh, but, no. Uh, <laughs> fescue. That gobbles up golf balls even worse than woods do. Right. Uh, okay, so then what about like food and grub and dining and, and you know, drinks and all that kind of stuff? So Gaylord's known as the Alpine Millage. Our downtown is uh, just quaint and uh, fun. We've got some great new restaurants uh, coming on board this spring. Uh, the former Diana's Delights is now called Marmalade. We've got Abby's Bistro. We've got uh, El Patron downtown. Of course, one of our favorites is Alpine Tavern. Uh, I spent a lot of time over there. All right, and I see that we have some wildlife here. Call of the Wild? <laughs> that, that was not taken from Call of the Wild, Jason. That was actually... <laughs> it is stuffed, though. Yeah, it is stuffed, <laughs> but that is just to let uh, the viewers know that uh, northern Michigan has one of the largest free-ranging elk herds east of the Mississippi River. The herd is doing amazing. Uh, it's about 1,600 man animals, and if you're not lucky seeing them out there, you can go over to the Gaylord City Elk Park. It has about 40 animals, some psycho deer, some fallow deer. You'll always see them over there. All right, so we have this rod and reel here. You see this. I, I, I was messing with this earlier. We have a pond over here, and I was <laughs> trying a little bit of something there. Hang on just a second. Let me show you what I caught. This is kind of amazing. <laughs> oh, that's nice. I caught that <laughs> just before the show with this rod and reel right what here. What is so that? Do you know what that is? Uh, yeah, that's a ginormous betta fish. <laughs> <laughs> Probably from the Detroit River. <laughs> from the meta, it's from the metaverse. It's from the metaverse. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Right. A lot of fun. All right. Yeah, we'll see you up north. Yeah, exactly. You know, we have a short drive back now, right? Right on. Okay, cool. So you know that we're all about shopping local here on Live in the D, and why not shop with a little vintage flair? You know, I love me a good uh, retro store, antique shop, uh, anything that's like that, where you can go find something that's 70 years old or 100 years old or whatever. I'm, I'm all about it. Well, the thing that we learned is vintage is something that's 30 years old, at least. And antique is 100 years old. That's right. Yeah. We're so smart here. So check out Riverside Vintage. They've got some really cool items. You might be thinking about freshening up the look of your home. And a shop in Clinton Township is helping people add a cool vibe to their homes with some unique items. The shop is called Riverside Vintage Market, and we are joined by the owner, Samantha Staniszewski. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Well, let's start off with talking about the term vintage. What is it about vintage items that draw so much attention, and how are you seeing this style being incorporated by shoppers? Absolutely. So vintage items are pieces that are at least 30 years old. And then antique items are pieces that are at least 100 years old. And I think there are a few reasons why these pieces are so coveted by shoppers. One being that they are truly one of a kind or at least one of a few, mm -hmm. meaning that you can't easily order them online or get them at an everyday shop. You really have to go out searching for them. And a lot of people enjoy that thrill of the hunt. These pieces were also made with really high quality materials and fine craftsmanship. So by investing in one of these pieces, you have something in your home that should last the test of time. And then my favorite aspect of some of these pieces is that they have really lived many lives before they get to us, whether that's being passed down through multiple generations of a family or just having a lot of unique owners over the years. So they really have a history and a story that I think a lot of people appreciate. I agree. I love a good story behind a piece of furniture or decor in the home. But tell us about some of the furniture and home decor that you offer and what makes it unique. Sure. So as the name suggests, we offer furniture that is vintage. For us, that's like 1970s or earlier. And I personally really like the late 1800s through like 1920s or 30s. So you will find a lot of pieces from those earlier eras in the shop. As far as furniture, we have a variety of natural wood as well as painted and partially painted furniture. And I do have some talented local vendors that help me out with that. And then when it comes to home decor, the pieces are really carefully curated. So I do have a mix of old and new to really help me establish an aesthetic for the shop. This leans most heavily toward like an old world farmhouse, cozy cottage and natural boho feel. And it really caters to customers who are looking to incorporate like that same vibe or feeling into their home. Very nice. So what other items do you sell at your market? So when you enter the shop, if you were to turn left, you would be where I'm standing now, which is kind of like our showroom. It's where we have our furniture and larger home decor pieces on display. 
But if you were to turn right, we do also have smaller specialty and giftable items. These range from candles to bar soaps and bath salts to jewelry and accessories. And what's great about the pieces here at RVM is that most of them are handcrafted and locally made. And I can share some of those with you now. So a few items we have, we currently have two all natural clean burning candle lines in the shop. Our Woodwick line is Applewood Candle Co., which is a woman owned business located just a few minutes down the road here in Clinton Township, Michigan. And then our Cottonwick line is Max Low Candle Co., and that is a husband and wife owned business located in Hazel Park, Michigan. We also have the popular polymer clay earrings. Ours are made by Amateur Hour, a company in Royal Oak, Michigan. And then we also sell Gen UC Eyewear. This is a company in Flint, Michigan. The founder is actually a childhood friend of mine, and she is making sustainable eyewear out of recycled water bottles in Flint, Michigan. Very cool. Very cool. So you've got a little bit of everything. I think it's probably yes. best to come down and check it out for ourselves. So let everyone know where Riverside Vintage Market is located and how they can find you online. Sure. So we are a brick and mortar shop located in Clinton Township, Michigan right at the corner of Crocker and Harper, about one mile outside of downtown Mount Clemens. We are a weekend market, and for us, that is Thursday through Saturday. We also have an online presence via social media on both Facebook and Instagram at Riverside Vintage Market. This is definitely the best place to follow along as far as new items that are added to the shop weekly, as well as any exciting news or upcoming events we have going on. And then, of course, we are on Google for our exact hours and location. That sounds great, Samantha. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'm going to follow you on Instagram right now. <laughs> uh, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thanks for hanging out with us. We're live in the D in the green room. And of course, I want to invite you guys once again to join me on Tuesday, May 24th for the This Is Us finale watch party. But in order to be down with the party, you have to sign up to be a WDIV insider. Then go ahead and join us for the party. We have all the instructions there. And of course, you're also entered to win one of four amazing prices from MVC that are all about This Is Us. I can't believe this this whole thing is over. Can you believe it? Are you going to make it? I'm, I hope so. You're coming, oh, right? Oh, we have to end this right now because <laughs> she's about to start crying. Yeah. Bye. Have a great day, everyone. Is that a tear?